Hello. This video discusses some of the essential uses of the punctuation mark known as the comma. The comma obviously is one of the most used of the punctuation marks. And we're going to discuss some of the essential uses of this common punctuation mark. Wait, let's go right into it. Now, one of the ways we use the comma is that it is placed after introductory words in a sentence. Let's look at this example. So example one says, yes, we have done all we could. Yes is an introductory word and therefore is separated from the rest of the sentence by a comma. Example two says, well, what else could we do now? Well is also introductory. The same applies to the example three, why? You are, not, you are not allowed here. So why, well, yes, are all introductory words and naturally are separated from the rest of the sentence by a comma. Another way that we use the comma is that adverbs such as besides, however, nonetheless, notwithstanding, moreover, consequently, and the like, when they begin sentences, they are set off by commas. So example one says, nobody believed that. However, the moment we see however, it's followed by a comma. Truth remains truth. So however is separated by a comma from in example one. Then in example two, we have, we could not enter the museum as planned. Then we have, besides, everything turned out bad. The size is separated from the rest of the sentence by a comma. So when you see adverbs such as these, remember to separate them from the rest of the sentence by a comma. Then we also have introductory phrases and clauses, which are supposed to be separated by commas from the rest of the sentence. Introductory phrases and clauses. So example one, frankly speaking, I doubt anyone could believe that story. So frankly speaking, it's introductory. It's a phrase. Example two, when I saw her first, I, could not, I couldn't recognize her. When I saw her first, that's an introductory clause. And therefore, it separates. It is separated from the rest of the sentence by a comma. The third one, tell me, where is the town's post office? Now, all these introductory ones, once they come at the beginning, must be separated from the rest of the sentence. And even if they come at the end, so I doubt anyone could believe that story, comma, frankly speaking. I couldn't recognize her when I saw her. There may not be a need for a comma. Where is the town's post office? There must be a comma, tell me. So we have to be sure when to use the comma, but usually when they are, we have introductory phrases and clauses, they are separated from the rest of the sentence by commas. Also, we have words and phrases that are moved to the beginning of a sentence from their normal or original position. These ones are also set off by commas. Example one, there was obviously a decision to make. There is no use of comma in that example because obviously maintains its natural original position. Then in example two, it is moved to the beginning. There must be a use of a comma there. So obviously there was a decision to make. There must be a use of a comma. Example three, Malcolm was determined from the outset to win the prize. There is no need for the comma, as you could see, from the outset underlined, because that is the natural original position for that phrase. But brought to the beginning of the sentence in example four, it must be separated from the rest of the sentence by a comma. So from the outset, comma, Malcolm was determined to win the prize. So the moment a word or a group of words are moved from the original position to the beginning of a sentence, they must be set off by commas.
Then we have an appositive is also set off from the rest of the sentence by comments. An appositive only gives further information, additional information that can be done without. And what still remains makes sense, meaningful, acceptable, full-blown sentences. So for example, the speaker, one of the best alive, talked about his challenges. If you take away one of the best alive, the sentence will read, the speaker talked about his challenges, still meaningful. So positives are separated by two commas. Bob Marley, the reggae icon, was a genius of a musician. Now, the reggae icon, the positive, it can be done without, and the sentence still makes sense. Bob Marley was a genius of a musician. Acceptable. Example three, Mr. Zatara, the secretary, arrived early. So the secretary is in opposition to Mr. Zatara. It has to be separated from Mr. Zatara and the rest of the sentence. So a positive uh, is also, and a positive must be separated from the rest of the sentence by two commas. Words of direct address are also set off by two commas. By commas, I should say. So you look at example one, Damien, see me after class for a discussion. Over here, we are addressing Damien, and therefore that has to be uh, set off by a comma. Suppose there is no comma, and that sentence would be a little confusing. So Damien, see me after class for a discussion. What's the meaning? You may be wondering. So commas also give meaning to constructions. So Damien is the one addressed. What is important, my friends, is to be firm and fair. Example two, my friends is a direct, the one addressed. Whether it's in the beginning, the middle or the end, commas must be used. If it's at the end, a single comma, obviously. In the middle, double commas, obviously. Example three, what we need to do, dear colleagues, is to work with what we have. So dear colleagues, words of direct address must be separated from the rest of the sentence. So one way we can use commas is that they are used to set off words of direct address, usually nouns or names. Now in dates and addresses of more than one part, we have to set off every part after the first from the rest of the sentence. So if you have a date and it has more than one part, commas must be used. If it's just a single part, no need for a comma. Let's just look at these examples. Example one, Murdoch has a farm near Sunyani. Address, Sunyani is just one part, no need for a comma. Then you go to the second example, Murdoch has a farm near Sunyani, Bono region, Ghana. Three parts, so you separate Sunyani, Bono region from Ghana, two commas needed. Example three says, the program begins on May 15, just one part, so there is no need for a comma. Then example four says, the program begins on May 15, 2021. So May 15, 2021, two parts, there must be a use of comma, as you can see. So once we have a date, or an address with more than one part, remember to separate the two parts, the two distinct parts. And then we also have the use of restrictive clauses. So restrictive clauses are set off by commas. Restrict, restrictive clauses point out what they modify. Without them, the meaning of the sentence is confused or not complete. So what it means is that if a clause is restrictive, where you cannot take it out of the sentence. Taken out of the sentence, sometimes the sentence could still be grammatical, but there will be some difficulty with meaning. You have some problems with meaning. So example one, the book that I want is by Shakespeare. If you say the book is by Shakespeare, the question is which book? So that I want is restrictive. It has to be there for a full meaning. So you do not separate this type of clause with, from the rest of uh, the sentence with commas, you do not. Example two, 
A person who loves reading gains a lot of experience in the cultures of the world. Who loves reading? A person, the question comes who? Which person or who? And then who loves reading? Restrictive, defines a particular person. No need for comments. We are looking for a man who can work without supervision. Which man? The one who can work without supervision. No need for comments because these clauses are restrictive. They define. Without them, you cannot have a full meaning of the sentence. On the other hand, if we have non-restrictive clauses, they are set off by comments on the rest of the sentence. They only present added information and can be removed without affecting the meaning of the sentence. Unlike restrictive clauses that cannot be taken out of the sentence, non-restrictive clauses can be removed and what remains is still meaningful. So these ones can be separated or set off by commas. Let's see the examples. One, the new town market, which is still operative, is the biggest in town, which is still operative is non-restrictive because the sentence can read, the new town market is the biggest in town. So commas come in play. Kwame who is ready for work at all times is a beautiful soul. You can, the sentence can read, Kwame is a beautiful soul. So obviously the clause over there is non-restrictive and commas, commas have to come to work. The final example here says, these bags, which are just a sight to behold, are very costly. You can take away the non-restrictive clause, which will be, which in the sentence will read, these bags are very costly. So all these clauses are non-restrictive. You can do without them. And because they can be done without, you use commas to set them off from the rest of the sentence. Let's move on. When we have parenthetical expressions or words, they are separated by commas from the rest of the sentence. The parenthetical expressions are words that are inserted. Sometimes they provide additional meaning, but the same, just like non-restrictive clauses, they can be done without, and the sentence is still meaningful. Once they are used, commas come to work. So example one, you know, frankly speaking, that we have to forge on. So frankly speaking can be removed. It is parenthetical. And the sentence is still meaningful. So you know that we have to forge on. So frankly speaking is parenthetical expression. Now we have no one in fact was present when the gun went off. So in fact is just inserted. And so it has to be set off by commas. So these are expressions. Also, a single word can be parenthetical. For example, the class therefore had been fully warned. Therefore can be removed. The class had been fully warned. Daisy said, however, that that would be available for, that she would be available for the project. Excuse me for that. Daisy said, however, that she would be available for the project. So however, therefore, in fact, frankly speaking, all these ones are parenthetic, parenthetical expressions or words and can be done without and therefore must be separated by two commas. And remember to use a comma in place of words omitted from parallel word groups. So if you have parallel word groups, words can be omitted, but we can get the meaning from the context. Some of these omitted words can be replaced by a comma, and the sentence is still meaningful. Let's see some examples. Example one, Rika brought a laptop, Damien a mobile phone. Now, comma is used over there to replace the verb bought. So the verb bought is omitted. So Rika brought a laptop, Damien, comma, a mobile phone. Example two, in a typical class, 
Some are leaders and others followers. In the second appearance of the verb are, a comma replaces it, or that verb is omitted. But this is still a meaningful, matured way of writing. The auditorium was packed with people and the library, comma, completely empty. So the library was completely empty. You can drop the walls and replace it with a comma. So it is possible to use a comma in place of words omitted from parallel word groups. So it could be a noun, it could be a verb, it could be an adjective, it could be an adverb. Once it is from the same category of words and it can be, meaning can be deduced from existing words in context, a comma can be appropriately used. So that's just about our use of commas for this discussion. There are many other uses of the commas, but these are just some of the essential ways the comma can be used. And I hope you've enjoyed this discussion.